Hi and welcome back to Data 602 Advanced Programming Techniques. In this video we're going to be covering Docker Hub. If you are already familiar with Docker um, and not familiar with Docker Hub then this is a, vi a video that you do want to take a look at. Um, if you're not familiar with Docker at all we have a video that precedes this video that you should uh, view um, and get comfortable with before jumping to Docker Hub uh, because this is a bit of a, an advanced topic. Um, and if you are already f familiar with Docker Hub, and then this may be a video that you do want to skip. So let's get started. Quickly, we can review the concepts that we covered from the last video on Docker. There is the notion of a Docker file, and we said that the Docker file is kind of like a recipe that describes all of the resources that are used to build an image. And the image contains slivers of operating systems and the necessary libraries and packages and application binaries needed to run the application in a contained and isolated environment. So the Docker file is kind of the recipe book, um, and we use the Docker build command to pull together all of the resources into this binary and then when we can run this binary using the docker run command which creates these docker containers and these docker containers are similar to like uh, objects in an object oriented programming language where the image is the class and the object is the instance of the class when we run it the container is actually an execution that's running the blueprint image now this is fantastic now you know and if i'm using docker fairly heavily i'll probably eventually have a lot of images on my computer myself i personally speaking i have probably 30 to 40 images sitting on my computer at any given time uh, and these images are things that you are using and you may actually use some images and forget that you you have those images on on your computer but they end up piling up and so then what happens within an organization, let's say you're in an organization uh, with a, or in a team and there are a bunch of uh, developers or DevOps people and they have computers and they're all running a bunch of different images. Uh, how do you share these images? How do you uh, uh, exchange images? Um, and the question then becomes, uh, what happens if you've got a very large organization? How are you managing these images? Are they just sitting on your computer? How do you get them over to somebody else who may need to use them? Docker fortunately has a solution called Docker Hub. Docker Hub is a website uh, like GitHub. Uh, however, just like GitHub, it's a repository for images that can be shared across uh, within or across or across organizations or within an organization. The repositories can be public so that we can pull uh, like we did for the Python, uh, we pulled a public repository, or the repositories can be private and shared within an organization or a team. So what we're going to do in this session is actually try to push some stuff to the Docker Hub and see uh, see how it actually works. Um, and um, this should give you the ability to push your images, especially if they are images related to the assignments. So to get to Docker Hub, you'd go to the website hub.docker.com. Uh, and if you don't have an account already, you should set up an account. Uh, doing so is qu quite straightforward. Um, you just uh, set it up here um, and should take less than a minute. The account is free. If you want to store more than one private repository, then there is a pricing model for Hub. But if you want to put up a bunch of public images, uh, then the account is free. Now, if I want to publish to Docker, which means to place my images from my computer and transfer them to Docker Hub as a, you know, as a repository, a centralized repository, I would use a command called Docker Push. If you recall from the Docker video, we use a bunch of different Docker commands like Docker Build and Docker Run. Uh, in this case, in order for in order for us to push an image from our local computer to the Docker uh, repository, we use the command Docker Push. Conversely, if I want to grab an image that's already on Docker Hub, a, a repository that's already there, I would use a Docker pull command and that would move an image sitting on Docker Hub and place it on my local computer or whatever computer uh, that I'm executing this Docker pull command on. It could be a server or it could be uh, my local computer. So let's look at a demonstration of this. In the previous video, we used Docker 
on an Amazon Linux server EC2 instance. Um, what we're going to do now is actually run it on a Windows using uh, the Windows command line and uh, that should help those who are using Windows uh, see that actually the command, the Docker commands are identical. The first thing that we need to do is clone the Flask Trader Docker Git repository like we did in the previous uh, video. So what we'll do is we'll just do a git clone and it will be my ID Flask Trader Docker and just like we did in the last video we'll store this in a directory called FTD and Git pulls the files and if we go into FTD we'll see that there is the Docker file the requirements.txt and if we look at the file we see this is identical to the file that we explored in the previous video and we look at the requirements doc and we see that it's pulling in one library so this is similar exactly actually what we did in the previous video and so we're going to build the docker image using the docker build command this is similar to what we did in the previous video however there's a slight difference in the previous video we used the name trader app however what we're going to do this time is we're going to prepend it with our docker hub id so if you've already created your docker hub account the id that you have for that account is what you're going to use in my case it's override labs and then you put a forward slash um, and this indicates that this is eventually going to go to a docker hub and then i specify this dot here meaning that the docker file should be found in the local directory uh, and when i hit enter it starts building the docker image just like it did in the uh, previous video and when that's when that's complete we'll run the docker image of course this is running a little slower because previously we ran on a server that had a bit more resources available to it, a little faster CPU. Um, and uh, so once we have the image in place, we can use Docker image images to see that we do have images here. We have the Python and we also have override lab slash trader app. In your case, it's going to be whatever your username is for Docker hub um, and slash trader app. Now that we have the Docker, we have the images there, we can, we can uh, launch a container so what we do is docker run dash d dash p and we'll port it uh, map it to port 81 5000 and i'll say i want to run this image and i run that and now i have here i have here this container here you can see the id is identical uh, and i have this container running here so now what i do is if i shift to here um, and i hit refresh We'll see that actually the page loads, um, so I mean that means that the um, that the uh, app is running. I can go back to I can go back here and I can stop it. So you want to stop five BBC. And it stops. So if I hit refresh here, um, it's just not going to go anywhere. So let me just go back to here. I don't have a container running, but now what I want to do is I want to um, uh, get this image and put it on Docker Hub. So I'll, I'll log into my account, and this is this is my account. I hit refresh, and I can see that I have one repository sitting here, um, and I'm going to push this Trader app into this repository my repository on docker hub so what i'll use is the docker push command and that's simply like this so it's docker push overwrite labs trader app and it's pushing it um, and it's uploading all the binaries and this should take less than 30 seconds and once it's done we'll see that it'll appear on the docker hub page um, and There you go, refresh the page, and there it is. I see my trader app there, and now it's available, it's public, it's available, and now anybody else uh, out there that wants to use it can pull it down. And uh, now what I can do is um, 
I'm going to clean my Docker images. I'm going to remove all my images. Uh, and by the way, if this doesn't work for you, for some reason you're not authorized, make sure you use the Docker login command prior to pushing. Uh, that's going to make sure that you do log in uh, and that will log you in from the command line. So I'm already logged in. So now I want to clean my system and get rid of all the images. So I have an image here. I can I can remove it using Docker RMI and that will allow me to remove images but there is another command that we can use that allows me to remove everything. I'm just going to remove all to the Docker system prune um, and this is kind of a destructive act so it's really asking for a warning and now if I've removed all the images and if I check from Im images they're all gone. Now uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you how I can pull an image. So right now I don't have the Trader app. Let's say I want to get the Trader app on my machine. So what I do is I do Docker pull, override labs, Trader app, and that pulls it. So that's pulling it down now. There you go. Now I look at Docker images and I have the image now. Now I could have, there's no reason for me to have been the person that created this image. Somebody else could have created this image. And the fact that I just pulled it down means I can share images with other people. Uh, so if somebody had pushed that image up to the repository, I could have easily pulled it down. Um, and this allows us to share these uh, images. Now I can just, just for demonstration purposes, I can run this just to see that it's the same thing and uh, before I hit enter I'm just going to show you that this is not working so it just sits there it won't work but when as soon as I run it there's a new container allocated um, and if I refresh uh, we'll see that it works that concludes the demonstration portion I have here a quick guide to the commands that we've used um, for Docker and these are the also the commands that you probably will be using most often for Git. Finally, here are some resources that you might find useful uh, to explore further.